Enacted in 1978, the Indian Child Welfare Act requires states to prioritize the adoption of Native American children with relatives, tribal members, or other Native American families. Now, supporters of ICWA, as it's also known, say it protects against a history of policies allowing the government to take Native children from their families without cause, and often with the express goal of eradicating their tribal identities. But opponents say it puts a ch child's race above his or her well-being. Joining us to discuss, discuss this topic and others, we welcome this week's panel. Longtime regular and attorney Sophie Martin is here. With us again is former state representative and local attorney Justine Fox Young. Last time she was with us, there were two in her seat. Now there's just one as she's added a baby girl to the family. Congratulations. Thank you, Jean. And welcome back. Good I'm to see you. Glad to be back. Good to see you, too. Absolutely. Crystal Sierras is here. She's president and owner of Sierras Social Digital. Joins us, as always. And we'll round off the line regular panel with Serge Martinez, who's also a professor at the UNM School of Law. Thank you all for being here. Now, last year, the federal judge in Texas ruled the Indian Child Welfare Act unconstitutional. A federal appeals court panel last week, though, overruled that decision, paving the way for a re-arguing of the case before the full appellate court and a potential future date before the U.S. Supreme Court, where it was this issue a few years ago. Now, Sophie, complicated legal situation, to say the least, but let me start here. Did ICWA, in fact, while well-intended, go too far to right wrongs? No. Okay. No. Listen, at its heart, ICWA is about tribal sovereignty. Gotcha. And the, the tribes here in the U.S. have a unique relationship with the federal government, with the states. Mm -hmm. And really, I, I'm going to sort of like call out the thing you said before you described the state courts. Yeah placing children into particular um, preferred environments. But, but actually, a big part of what ICWA does is it says mm -hmm. that the tribal courts have jurisdiction over certain types of family law matters involving the welfare of children who are either enrolled or could be enrolled in tribes in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And so, and so uh, the best analogy I can, I can come up with right now is mm -hmm. um, if we acknowledge, and our government does, our Supreme Court does, that that the tribal um, tribal governments represent uh, nations mm -hmm. of their own. Mm -hmm. um, imagine if we said to Brazil, um, we're going to adopt your kids and you can't stop us. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, to the racism charge, mm -hmm. we're going to say to Brazil, you don't get to decide which of the people living in your country or which of the people associated with your country get citizenship. Mm -hmm. Think of Brazil. Brazil has uh, indigenous mm -hmm. individual, you know, folks descending from indigenous populations. They've got former African slaves. That's they've right. got Europeans, and all of these people are defined by Brazil mm -hmm. as Brazilians. Mm -hmm. It's the same sort of situation with our with our tribal communities. They get to say who is a citizen of their tribe, who is a member of their tribe, and when the the adoption or foster placement of a child who belongs to that tribe is at issue, mm -hmm. they should get to make the decision under ICWA. Mm -hmm. They should get to make the decision where the placement happens, what priorities they want to assert. And all of this, as you mentioned, is designed to prevent the kind of things that happened, I mean, early in the 20th century, right. not, right. not less than 100 ago. years That's ago, right. mm -hmm. where um, Native American children were forcibly removed from their families, mm -hmm. taken, into, uh, taken into boarding schools, um, forcibly converted to Catholicism in many cases. Mm -hmm. What's interesting here is that one of the major players in the anti iqua suits um, are, are groups involved in evangelical Christian adoption agencies whose stated goals include conversion of children That's right. That's to right. their religion. That's right. I think that the Native communities are correct to be concerned about this. Mm -hmm. The other thing that's at play, though, is if the courts, if the courts take down ICWA, what's to prevent them from taking down other elements of tribal sovereignty, which are so important mm -hmm. to New Mexico and to the 11 percent of uh, New Mexicans who are Native American? Interesting. We swing to Justine Fox Young on that same question: Has this gone too far? So I think Sophie's mm -hmm. totally right on the law okay. and on the context that ICWA was born out of. Okay. And it's a really complicated um, legal issue, but it's a complicated issue on the ground. And so to say, has it gone too far? I think for practical purposes, it did go far. And, and here are a couple of examples of why I think that's true. Okay. One, um, when you look at the, the preferential, the sort of triangle that ICWA builds, you know, f first you try to keep a child with their family, their extended family, with the tribe, and if not, any other tribe, it hasn't worked. It, ha it, it doesn't make sense. And you look at the case that went up to the Fifth Circuit, mm -hmm. the, the, the parents, the, the natural parents of this child, the family of the child, 
voluntarily terminated parental rights, mm -hmm. you know, liked this family, wanted That's the right. kid to go to this family, and then you have a court saying, well, there's a Navajo family in Albuquerque, let's try that. Mm -hmm. As a practical matter, it doesn't work. It didn't work. That's that right. placement didn't work. And, and that's so a real example you just used. There was a thought to have this child come to New Mexico for, for a, a, a family right. and it didn't work out. So, yeah, and yeah. so this repeats itself over and over. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons why is because there, there are not enough foster families in mm -hmm. Native communities. And so we set, this is like a, a system that's designed to fail. We have these kids go with non-Native foster families, form an attachment, and, and then, of course, you have heartbreaking case after heartbreaking case where, you know, what are you going to do with these kids? And so it went too far because we're relying on a, a greater community outside the Native community to, to care for these kids. And then when it comes to the question of who, who the parents actually are, mm -hmm. then you've got, you've got a, a law that doesn't work. So I think I'm actually surprised it's taken 40 years to reach this point mm -hmm. um, where we're considering what to do. I don't think it's a, an issue of, of race. I think Sophie's right on the law. Mm -hmm. um, there, there's no question we're dealing with sovereign nations. Right. And, and the problem is because ICWA went too far, I, I think it's, it, we're at the point now where it's not able to do what it was designed to do to protect these kids. Mm -hmm. And all these other issues of sovereignty are in jeopardy. Mm -hmm. And so for practical purposes, it did. And, and it is very heartbreaking. Serge, the idea of states' rights has come up uh, from the Texas folks in this situation. Uh, the idea that this is unconstitutional. You know, to touch on that if you would. This idea that it seems like it be a snowball rolling downhill. It's getting a little bit bigger as it goes here. The idea of states' rights having a little bit more firmament here than the other way. Yeah, the states' rights question, the Tenth Amendment. This is something that's been mm -hmm. uh, a relatively you know, new on the scene argument that's been used by um, mm -hmm. Federalist, for Federalist purposes, conservative folks, um, um, that is getting a lot of momentum and having, having its day in the sun. Mm -hmm. This idea that somehow the federal law um, telling a state what to do is commandeering state agencies mm -hmm. right, instead of what it really is, is an end run around federal law. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's gathering momentum and I think is it's something to keep an eye on. I think in this context, mm -hmm. right, it's interesting the, the person who folks are most looking to to protect the tribal rights and sovereignty and, mm -hmm. and uphold the Supreme Court's role in protecting um, tribal nations is uh, Justice Gorsuch, mm -hmm. who from his time out here in the West That's right. has, and interesting since point he's been uh, in Washington, has shown that he's willing to, mm -hmm. to, to, to keep the, you know, the court in its role of protecting tribal sovereignty. Mm -hmm. Crystal, uh, Justine mentioned the situation in Texas in this whole how, how it was just sort of, like how, it depends on how you look at it, so to speak, at this point. You, you know what I mean? It's almost like a refraction. <laughs> it's kind yeah, of interesting. Yeah, yeah I, I'm Please. not going to pretend that I'm an absolute subject matter expert in terms of legal mm -hmm. law. I'm not going to that, that line Fair of that's going to pretend. But mm -hmm. one thing I do know is culture and preservation of culture. And, you know, the reason why this is so complicated is not only because of the sovereign nation that we're dealing with, you mm -hmm. know, the, the federally registered tribes, but... You know, I find it very ironic. You know, I was looking at a case down in Southern California from 2016 where mm -hmm. a child, uh, a family of the Choctaw Nation, uh, I might misquote that, but mm -hmm. one of the uh, federally recognized tribes decided to pull a girl from their foster family, and she was only 1.25% of the bloodline of the Native Reservation. Oh, wow. um, and that was enough to prove that she should have been pulled from her foster home. I, find, I found that situation very ironic in the implementation of, of, uh, of ICWA because... There are some federal, um, federal, uh, federally recognized uh, tribes that don't even give medical benefits, financial benefits, or family benefits yeah. to families that are even one sixteenth or one twenty fifth of the um, of the uh, the bloodline. And so, again, like, is it? Are we using the law in its best intent possible? That's question number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, if it is a preservation of culture, is the tribe actually proving that by taking the child away from their foster family, do they have the right resources to actually train them on the native language, the native um, uh, religion, the, um, whether it be Christianity or not? Mm -hmm. um, it's a big question mark on what the actual intent is. And, and so I just find it as a big, 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 big contradiction. And mm -hmm. you know, you look back at it, if they're being pulled from foster homes, I mean, 
the word foster and the concept of foster homes is a foster homes for a reason. It's not adopting. And those that have right. been adopted, some cases they've been pulled, some cases they haven't because yeah. of the legality behind it. So again, I'm not an expert in this subject matter mm -hmm. field. I am a big believer in preservation of culture. But are people using the loopholes in the law to actually benefit their families? Mm -hmm. Very much possible. Interesting points there. Appreciate that. Sophie, mm -hmm. I ask you to finish up this uh, subject with us here. The other idea that's interesting out there is whether foster families are even notified uh, uh, that there's a child is placed with them that the child is Native American. D do you know what I mean? It's like, it, so p it, it opens the door, opens the door, it closes the door and allows people to walk in the back door to make the situation difficult, it seems I, to me. You know what, I, I think um, that this is certainly an area <clears throat> in which the system is not perfect. Right. Because they're, they're um, often tribes are not notified that somebody, That's that a child is being placed, mm -hmm. um, that it, it takes some work for them to figure that out. Right. It shouldn't be a situation where you're just kind of able to get away with it because right. nobody told you. I mean, ultimately, the foster parents, the foster family, doesn't have the same rights as, as natural parents. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, cr we sort of heard a little of this. You know when you're fostering that adoption is not a given. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. I certainly have friends who have, who have fostered children and they struggle with that. Mm -hmm. um, but that said, um, when you make the move toward adoption, you just have to be aware that right. this is a possibility. And, and you know, the U.S. president said something um, about Native Americans uh, not too long ago about how so-and-so doesn't doesn't look Native American, so they shouldn't be considered Indian. And it's just you can't do it based on the appearance. There's mm -hmm. too much complexity mm -hmm. there. And it's up to the tribe. Yeah. That's it right. It's up to the tribe to That's decide. Right. Just, yes, they are a nation. Got about a minute left. I want to swing. Uh, actually, I thought I'd finish with you. Only finish with search. Sorry about that. Got to swing DACA into this. Obviously, okay. you know, we got things going on this week at the Supreme Court about this. Mm -hmm. And this whole idea about uh, dreamers and, and, and where this is all going to end up going. Uh, all indications, at least, the, the president's going to get what he wants a little bit out, out of mm. this, for sure. Um, what, does this, what does this say about us and how we view children overall in the United States, how we're managing children here, and, and who gets to go where and under whose household? See what I mean here? It's, we're, we're in this weird flux period right now, well, it seems to me. I mean, yeah, I mean, certainly all of the folks who are DACA recipients, right? All right. I think universally people can agree. Look, they didn't decide to come here of their own volition. They are American children and everything except for the mm -hmm. you know, passport they carry. And we are saying that, you know, for political gain, we're going to sort of mm -hmm. just remove all of the things that they could bring to our country and all of the reliance that they've had and all mm -hmm. the, the fabric of the society that, you know, that we've created with right. these folks as part of it. And obviously, I think it's short sighted and exceedingly ill advised. Right. Um, I, I know you're trying to stop me, but That's I just right. want to say, uh -huh. in terms of going back to ICWA briefly, Please. right? Yeah. Um, Native children are removed from their homes at a disproportionately yes. high number rate, mm -hmm. um, and it is a, it's a live issue, right? We it's and it's complicated, mm -hmm. and for every story we hear of something like we're hearing in the news, right? There's someone who was fostered out and is upset and cut off from their, you know, tribe, their right. traditional mm -hmm. culture That's and their right. tribal roots. Yep. And it's complex. We have a specialized court that we're just starting here in Albuquerque to address purely these ICWA questions hmm. because it's so prevalent and such a live issue mm -hmm. and so challenging that it requires that. Glad you got that in. Good stuff there. We're out of time for this go-round. We'll take a quick break, reset, and be back in a moment with yet another twist in the Victoria Martin's murder case.